I've been traveling quite a lot. Um, the purpose was, of course, to collect data for my PhD work. I'm now in the process of writing up my dissertation, so it will probably take one year. And I had the opportunity to meet with prominent educators within the field of global studies. Um, in South Korea, I met with Dr. Hans Schattel, who wrote extensively about the notion of global citizenship and identified to my question, what are the core characteristics of a global citizen or global citizenship, he identified awareness, participation, agency, voice, empowerment, and empathy. In the United States, New York City, Columbia University Teachers College, I met with Dr. William Gabelli. He talks about actions in their life, way of being, diversity, identity. Same, in New York City, I met with Dr. Betty Reardon, a uh, prominent peace activist. She talks about of global citizenship in terms of peace learning, political advocacy, responsibility, and eventually in Los Angeles, UCLA, I met with Dr. Carlos Alberto Torres, who is, by the way, one of the disciples of uh, Paulo Freire. He talks about a new ethics in the world system, a pedagogy of question, a model of interrupting inequality, a forward-looking framework. So these educators are all really into uh, the notion of global citizenship education, and they define this notion in different ways. Um, there is another way to define the notion of global citizenship education, which is through non-killing education. So in other words, this is a, a recent book that was published. I, I contributed to this book. I wrote a chapter for this book. Um, and I'm pleased to know that this has already been in use uh, by some of my colleagues and universities in Hawaii, also in Japan. It talks about the importance, my chapter specifically, it talks about the importance of, of connecting uh, an attitude of non-killing to an attitude of developing students' global awareness. Uh, so if you're interested in peace education, global studies, I recommend the book, not because I have been writing a chapter, but that's also a reason, but because it's really interesting and there are multiple perspectives to this, especially seeing what's going on in the United States. And anyway, I don't want to get back to be too political, but uh, very important notion. Now the question is, yes, but how do you actually teach this in your classes? When I present the conferences, this is the question I get at the end. So I'm anticipating this briefly, then we can discuss later. But you can do this in many ways. Uh, when you have a chapter, for example, this is my own example, this is what happened to me. I have many examples, but I'm going to show this one. You have a chapter on death penalty in a university in Japan. Um, do the students know that in Japan still we have death penalty? 90% of my students didn't know. So we discuss around that. What do you think? What are your thoughts? And we watch a video about that on YouTube where there were several young people around the world sharing their opinion. They could be pro death penalty or against death penalty, but let's discuss. Let's put that on the table. What happens in the United States? There are cases where people have been condemned to death and that they actually were innocent. So we were discussing all of this. How this connects to develop students' uh, respect for diverse viewpoints. Well, some people still think that death penalty is okay, it's fine. Some others think that it's absolutely a barbaric practice. Uh, but we need to discuss around that. So there are several ways to develop this point.